So our study today on prepared from the book of Jonah. We must look at Jonah first before we continue to our study. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Arise and go to Nineveh, the Lord speaking to Jonah, that great city and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee of the Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. Now, Nineveh is on the west. Tarshish is on the east. And what Jonah has done is he's completely gone opposite. And it is said he's gone from the presence of the Lord. He's left the Lord. Verse 10. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. So Jonah knows what he's done. He's rebelled against the word of God. Now, chapter 4, Jonah 4. Jonah chapter 4, verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying, when I was yet in my country, Israel? Therefore I fled unto Tarshish, for I knew that our, thou art a gracious God, merciful, slow to anger, great kindness, and repentance thee of evil. Now therefore, therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech you, my life from me. For it's better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do it thou well to be angry. And so Jonah went out to the city, sat on the east side of the city. There remained him in a booth, sat under a shadow, till he might see what would come of the city. So Jonah, to break into what we're going to study today, Jonah is rebelling against God. He's angry. God spares Nineveh. And Jonah is camped out under a boot waiting for the destruction. Whereas he said that God is merciful. So now we go to Jonah. Verse 1, verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Why would God prepare a great fish, which Jesus said was a whale? Because Jonah rebelled against God. And one thing we got to realize, we've got to learn. Especially the mindset of America. God cannot bless wickedness and rebellion. He can't. So instead of a blessing Jonah gets prepared by God Jehovah, he gets a great fish to swallow Jonah. He's not going to get a blessing. He's not ready for a blessing. In chapter 4, verse 6, same book, And the Lord God prepared a gourd, which made to come up over Jonah, that he might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. And Jonah was exceeding glad for the gourd. All right, so Jonah gets something good. All right, Jonah finally went to Nineveh, and he preached what he was supposed to preach. So God gave him a gourd. A gourd's not anything really spectacular. You can get a pumpkin that's bigger than a gourd. So what little Jonah put into is what little God puts into him. And this is a case where little is not much when God's in it because Jonah's not in it. So for his rebellion, God prepares a great fish for his 
doing what God told him to do, reluctantly, God prepared the gourd. Now look at verse 7. But God prepared a worm. When the morning rose the next day, smoked the gourd, and it withered. So the blessing of the gourd by God didn't last even overnight. That God prepared a worm for the purpose of destroying what made Jonah please, glad the gourd. Whereas, you know what pleased God? This entire city, the king, the people, repented and sought God. And Jonah's in a booth waiting for God to destroy it. After the testimony that God's merciful, God's gracious, yet Jonah did finally do what God told him to do, reluctantly, so that Gord which please him, God prepared a worm to destroy. Look at verse 8. And it came to pass when the sun did rise that God prepared a vivid east wind. The sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted. And he wished himself to die. It is better for me to die, to die than to live. So what's going on here? Well, an entire city was told by Jonah through God, destruction coming. And they repented. And they got right. And that pleased the Lord. But it didn't please Jonah. It didn't please Jonah at all. So Jonah would rather have death when the Ninevites have been given life and mercy. Jonah didn't get none. Jonah got a great fish. Jonah got well, a gourd. Jonah got a worm. And then Jonah got heat exhaustion. All for rebellion. So there are people who would think, hey, God's going to bless me no matter what. No matter what I do, God's going to bless me. Oh, no, he's not. You may get quite opposite. What about people that do what God told them to do reluctantly? You're not going to get a full blessing. Give it all your heart. Give it all to God. Give it all to Jesus. If you're going to do something for God, you're going to do something for Jesus, do it full-heartedly. Now, to move further, Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. I, John, saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Well, here's the city of God, from God, that the adoring, the lavishment, and the riches of this city is described as a bride in her attire for her husband. And God gives it to Christians. Now, every Christian is going to get that. Every Israelite, every Jewish person that goes off into the new earth will have that amazement of New Jerusalem. As with the Gentiles before the church age and the tribulation period and the millennium that go into the new heaven. We will be adorned by God that his 
preparation of New Jerusalem and the lavishing beauty as a bride for her husband. That's remarkable. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter two, verse four or two nine. Chapter two, verse nine. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. It is unrevealing, yet in the scripture, for those that truly love God, the reward of the gold, silver, and precious stones, of the right of an inheritance, the crowns, the blessings of God, prepared by God again like New Jerusalem for those that love him. You know what Jonah got? He got a whale. He got a gourd. He got a worm. He got we're living in heat and sunstroke. And the internal life of those that are of God, by God, we get New Jerusalem adorned like a bride for her husband. We get for those that love God a preparation of what we cannot fathom of what heaven and New Jerusalem is going to be like. Picture, if you would, if you are in pain, if you are suffering, if you have tears, eternal life without any of that, eternal life with no lies, no medications, no crime, for those that love God, prepared by God. Then we go to John 14. John 14. And there, there is many, many. But we're going to just hit the tip of the iceberg. John 14. Verse 1. Let not your heart, there's that heart again. We saw that in 1 Corinthians. Be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. All right, so you love God. He's prepared for you. You believe God. Believe also in Jesus. Don't be troubled. In my Father's house, heaven, are many mansions. What will be if your Bible does not say mansion? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I, Jesus, go to prepare a place for you. So New Jerusalem for the Christian is prepared as a bride adorneth herself for her husband. The majesty, the awesomeness of heaven for those that love God are prepared by God. And a place, heaven, is prepared by the Lord Jesus Christ. Comparing that to the rebellion of the half-heartedness of Jonah, to us that love God and want to please Him. Now, to close on a bad state, Matthew 25, Matthew 25. So, through God and Jesus Christ, there are great things prepared. Matthew 25, 
41. I'm in the wrong chapter. I'm having a hard time turning the page. Okay, 41. 2541. Now here's a bad one. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. That's not good. Now Jonah didn't even get that. Jonah got judgment. Jonah did not get full potential of Jehovah. Here, there are people, depart from me, ye cursed. They're, they're called to depart. They're called cursed into the everlasting fire, which is hell. Prepare for the devil and his angels. So here's a preparation by God, the creator. That God made hell, not for man, but for the devil. And the one-third of the angels that take the devil's side. But when a man wakes up in hell, the everlasting fire, God didn't put him there. You put yourself in there by rejecting the salvation by rejecting the gift of God, eternal life. Jonah got preparations from Jehovah in his rebellion. And he was exceedingly glad at one point where his gladness changed into sorrow. Christians get a wonderful blessing of God and Jesus. The unsaved and Satan get a preparation of God, hell, and the lake of fire that burneth forever. I say to you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, receive the preparations of God and Jesus, eternal life, blessings. Don't reject God and Jesus and get the preparation of Satan, hell, and the fire that burns forever. Don't rebel against God, what he tells you to do, because you may not like what you get. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. 